Hello, this is Dr. Mo. I would like to talk to you about how public health works. This is part one of part two I would like to prepare for you for this class. I want to talk to you about what is public health, what is social determinants of health, what is health promotion, what factors affect health, where to gather information about health problems. And in the part two, we will discuss the anatomy of how to prepare a proposal. Let's talk about what is public health. Public health is the science of protecting and improving the health of families, communities, to promoting a healthy lifestyle, the choices we make, we conduct research, look at injuries, we try to detect, control infectious diseases, we study them through epidemiology. Public health is concerned to in protecting the health of the entire population, not just a small group, the whole population. That's why we differ from medicine. We don't treat individuals, we try to look at the population. That's why public health sometimes is referred to as population health. The population could be as small as small community, local neighborhood, or as big as a state, or even a nation or a country. Public health professionals try to prevent problems from happening to start with. We want to make sure things don't happen, or if they do happen, they do not reoccur again. That's why we use immunization to prevent things. We try to implement educational program interventions, screening, we recommend policies, we try to work with services, offer services, we do conduct research, and that's how we differ from clinical professional doctors and nurses who primarily focus on treating an individual after they have occurred, incurred a disease, or acquired an injury. <clears throat> Public health has about 10 essential services. Monitoring health, diagnosing and investigating, informing and educating and empowering their community by mobilizing them, engaging them in participation. We help them, and we work with them to develop policies to make sure their community are safer. We try to enforce laws to make sure buildings, roads, hospitals, clinics, restaurants, swimming pools are all safe. And we want to Make sure we collaborate with providers, with doctors, nurses, hospitals, clinics. We obviously, like yourself, try to train very competent health workforce. <clears throat> and at the end, then we want to evaluate the whole process of public health practice. In the middle of all this is research. We do research many, many different in your classes of research. You learn how to you conduct research and that feeds into monitoring, diagnosing, educating, mobilizing, developing policies as well. If you're interested to learn more about public health, Dr. Greg Martin, who is the advisor to Bill Clinton, he's the director of the HIV AIDS International Project. He has an excellent presentation on public health and also global health if you're interested in international health. <clears throat> health promotion works at five different levels, individual levels, lifestyle that we do, choices we make, at home, in a community, activities we engage in, the local community, and obviously the economy and the environment. So our age, gender, ethnicity, our lifestyle, diet, physical activity, exercise, smoking, sexual health, play, learn, Living, moving, shopping, in local communities, you want volunteer support, social services. If you get a heart attack, you want ambulance to get to you right away within five or six minutes. Local economy and environment, if you don't have job, your housing is lousy, you don't have enough transportation, you don't have enough open space, safe environment, then these are all affect the individual health. So individual health is the center of all health and social care that we provide to society.
So five levels of health promotion are developing policy, creating support environment, providing needed health services, strengthening community action, and finally, developing individual skills at the individual level. There are four factors that affect health, physical environment, social cultural factors, community resources, and individual mental and behavioral factors. <clears throat> Physical factors such as geography, climate, weather. Right now in Southern California, we have water problem, drought. We have gas leaking out of the ground. We have flood um, floods happening in many parts of, the, of our region. We close to the ocean. We see the ocean encro encroaching onto the land. We have right now lead poisoning in Flint, Michigan. We're not sure our water is safe. Your neighborhoods have no access to food, quality food. There are places you are not able to walk safely or work safely. So you could see the environment, the size of a community. Are we living in a rural or urban environment? Are we living in a congested housing environment? Are these old buildings? Are they full of lead? Who's investigating them? And we want to make sure sometimes communities have lots of resources available to them. We can collaborate with them. Sometimes communities have high-tech, low-tech, manufacturing, retail. Sometimes they impact the environment in the different ways. Social cultural factors affect health. Beliefs, tradition, prejudices, the choices they make in what they eat, what they drink, normal number of sodas they take every day, economic opportunities available. <clears throat> political climate, religious institutions also help a great deal with working with families. Many times in order to enter the community, you need to work with the religious institutions. For example, I think the uh, Korean uh, community in Los Angeles have about five or 6,000 members. So if you like to reach those communities, you need to go through those institutions. They also provide many services for the, for the, for the members. We look at the social norms and beliefs. We look at educational opportunities that are available. Number of high school graduates, how many drop out of school, are the employment opportunities available, gang membership, and so on, that affect unemployment. What is social determinant of health? So we use the term social determinant of health was basically came from Ottawa Charter, and it's more of an international concept that they look at what are the factors in society that affect health. We as public health, we examine all social causes that affect individual health. We're not just looking for diseases, we're not looking for infection, or mode of transmission, agent host and environment. We do all that too. But we also know that race and ethnicity, unemployment, social status, housing, access to care, proper urban planning, crime, discrimination, social inequity, and even social disparities. And you can see a difference that exists between different minority populations. These are all social factors that affect health. Where do we look for the such information? We look at epidemiological data. We don't only collect data on diseases, notifiable and non-notifiable non diseases, infections, but we also uh, look at the epidemiological data from the local, state, national, international sources, which includes infectious diseases, but also include accidents, industrial accidents, crime. Secondary data, we could go after secondary data. We look at, for example, crime data to find out how that affect domestic, domestic violence. We look at literature review. As a scientist and researcher, we want to look at the more uh, recent literature on that topic. We want to go online and do that more research in that area, find who else doing research in that area, what they think about it. We want to, number one thing that I always like to do is to have, suggest to talk to people who are affected by the problem. Maybe talk to people who take care of those people. We call them key informants. May conduct hall meetings, focus groups, conduct surveys. And we, as you know, we teach you how many, many different ways to do focus groups and conduct surveys. Right now, with the gas leaking out of our underground in Los Angeles, talking to people, conducting town, town hall meetings, with them and actually working with the media is the best way to get information and be able to spread the 
and, and put our handles around the problem. We collaborate with many organizations, United Way, Boys and Girls Club, American Cancer Society, Lung Association, Arthritis Foundation. We look with neighborhood safety, we, we, we work with the National Council of Alcohol Drug Abuse, we work with the law enforcement, we look for the certified emergency preparedness group, we look at alcohol, tobacco, firearms, we look for work for violence prevention coalition groups. I'm a board member with Violence Prevention Coalition, VPCOC of Orange County. I do encourage you to join us. And, and participate in reducing violence and improving peace and safety in our neighborhood. Community organization tools, there are many tools available. We learn those in our classes. In order to organize the community as, a, as one, of our, one of our toolboxes, we need to use participatory model. We want to respect the community. We want to engage them in the process. We want to build coalition, advisory board. We want to develop supportive system. We want to map out our the assets and deficit, we want to learn about the social capital. These all could be written in reports to determine the level of a problem in addition to statistics and numbers. Individual behavior affect health, lifestyle, diet, exercise, stress, immunization. That's where we gather a lot of information about individual diet and practices to so be able to intervene. Now the policy regarding carrying firearms in exploding in our country. And you can see places like Texas, people can freely carry firearms in, in, in shopping centers and going out in public. And we still don't know what will be the impact of that problem in the population. We know, for example, prescription medication abuse. Uh, we know about obesity. We know about sitting too much during the day. Uh, we also know consuming large quantities of, of sugar and sucrose is oftentimes a problem. We try to use that many models and beliefs and theories to try to figure out why people do what they do. We learn about, we use social learning theory because we learn that people learn from each other. We believe that if people believe that they have a problem, they seriously feel a threat, they want to do something about it. We look at locus of control to see maybe culturally some people believe that the outside environment control them. We look at the change theory to see whether certain behavior, social social policies changes over time. We offer reward and incentives for people. We also conduct group health promotion. In health promotion, to do and implement the plan, we use these kinds of models to try to reach to the community. And this is what we're going to cover more in our next part. We use proceed preseed model, diffusion of innovation, how we diffuse the information into the information into, into targeting variety of different public with different interests and different level of, of accepting the innovation. Social marketing techniques, mass media, social learning theories also used to realize how people learn from one another and we could use that theory in disseminating implementing our project. We do planning models. We use logic models to realize what exactly is it that we expect to, uh, to reach you as an outcome in our program. So public health through a process of engaging community to identify the problem, mobilize resources, develop strategies, and reach the goals. Engaging community is not a science, but an art of consensus building, being fair and just, and really sincerely want to help them and participate in their activities in order to have them to reciprocate such, uh, such fact. Meaning that you need to participate and be with them, attend their meetings, attend the local meeting, go to the association meeting, go to the board meeting, go to town hall meetings, be there when they need you, and when you need them, they're there for you. So, so far we learned what is public health, how health promotion fu functions at different levels, what factors affect health, what kinds of tools are available to us, and where to gather health information. So remember, public health is there to prevent, promote, and protect you. Thank you very much, and have a great day.